Heavy Transport Models have commissioned this exclusive heavy haulage combination of a Mercedes-Benz tractor and gold offer trailer, and it's made by Conrad. It's in the colours of Balmer, which is a small German specialist heavy haulage company. And the model's been made in very limited numbers. It comes with a black and white instruction sheet, which covers most of the combinations of the model, but we'll go through those in detail. And inside the nice box, the model is securely wrapped in black foam rubber. Among the various parts are the Mercedes-Benz tractor unit, which unusually has one mirror already fitted. There are the Goldhofer axle bogies, uh, a bag of various parts to use in the assembly. There are some plastic deck sections for the trailer bed. And there is the main frame for the trailer bed, which is already pre-assembled. Among the remaining parts is the gooseneck, which is used to connect the trailer to the tractor. And buried inside the foam rubber are some of the connecting pieces that are used for the various combinations of the trailer. There's also a light bar that goes on the back of the trailer. As usual, there's no information about the real trailer included with the model, and perhaps it would have been nice to have had a Goldhofer brochure, or maybe a collector's card with a photo of the real machine. <laughs> The instructions don't cover the usual items of fitting door mirrors and aerials, but it's easy enough and the first thing to do is just to separate the parts with a sharp modelling knife and then you can start to fit them. The plug-in end of the roof aerials on this model just needed a little bit of a trim so that they could be pressed into the holes properly. In contrast, fitting the door mirrors is really quite easy and straightforward. They just uh, press into the holes that have been formed in the side of the cab and they stay in quite well. There's just one other mirror to fit and that goes over the passenger side door. When that's done that just leaves one other item to fit on the Mercedes-Benz tractor and that's a second towing hitch which fits in at the rear. It goes in easy enough but just be aware that it sticks out a little too far so that when you fix the trailer to the tractor um, it can't really turn properly so it's best left off. Before we assemble the trailer let's have a look at some of the many configurations that are possible. You can put either module unit onto the gooseneck or if you want of course both module units together just to get a short trailer. Um, usually you'll want the uh, deck to be attached and that can fix directly to the gooseneck either with a short or long module or in fact both modules attached. With that we can now look at the options for the deck. So the first possibility you have is to go for a wider deck. So if you're carrying something that's uh, fairly heavy um, but with an abnormal width then you could extend the deck like this. It's quite stiff to uh, stretch out the outside beams uh, but you can do that and um, what's also supplied with the model are some transverse beams which can go across and there are three different lengths of those supplied and you get three of each length. So you've got uh, several different options there as to how you configure uh, the deck for width and you can also then stretch it out and have a long wide deck as shown and again you can fit the transverse beams as you like. The next possibility you have is to go for something that's long but back at the standard width so you can just close it up and if you don't want the long deck you can go back to the original length deck and another choice you've got is to have a solid deck surface and there are various pieces provided for that. I won't fit them now but they just uh, go into place as you can see. And even with all those combinations we're still not quite finished because the deck frame itself can be uh, unpinned and dismantled. These pins are factory installed so they might be a little bit tight and perhaps you need suppliers but once you separate the parts out then what you're left with is the outer beams separated. And by using another adapter piece, you can form the equivalent of a very narrow spine beam, which can also be extended for length as well. OK, let's now assemble the trailer in its basic configuration. So we'll start at the front and fix the front bogey unit to the gooseneck. And it's easy enough just to interlock the joint and clamp it together. And then you use a plastic pin to fix the two parts, and that forms a strong connection. What one thing to note here is, is that the knuckle joints on the axles all point towards the front on the front bogey unit. The next part to fit is the connection point onto the trailer deck and that's a special piece that uh, the trailer deck just talks into. Again you just press it into place, uh, form the connection by using again one of the plastic pins that are supplied. 
Next is to put the light bar on the back of the rear bogey unit and that just simply presses into place. Now you have a choice as to whether you have the knuckle units on the rear bogey unit pointing to the front or the back. The instructions seem to show them pointing towards the front, but I'll assemble the trailer with the knuckle units pointing towards the back. Attaching the deck unit is exactly the same process as for the other um, secure connections. It just presses into place into the rear bogey and you use again a plastic pin on the underside. Sometimes it can be quite hard to get the plastic pins in because of paint thicknesses and just getting the um, thing exactly aligned. But you can always use a flat headed screwdriver to push it home. The last connection on the trailer is a mechanical one and the hooks on the front of the deck just hook over into the adapter piece and then the trailer is formed. And the last thing we'll do is to attach the solid deck sections. At a standard width they only go in one way round and there's three uh, large panels that uh, just drop into place and span between the two beams and you get one shorter length piece and then you've got a solid deck to put a piece of plant on if that's what your load is. We'll start underneath the tractor and the steering is purely functional but the rear transmission and suspension is modelled really well. Moving to the outside the detail on the cab is good with a light bar and air horns and beacon lights on the top, colour coded door mirrors and an impressive looking chevron bumper. The Balma decoration is good. This particular tractor is modelled after one that's called White Lady. And if we look at some of those really small graphics, even the small ones are perfectly legible. One detail that is missing is that there's no number plate, but the equipment tower behind the cab is very good, and it's nearly all made of metal. Looking underneath the Goldhofer axle units, the moving parts are nearly all plastic, but the tyres and wheels look quite good. And the underside of the gooseneck also has some detailing with some wheel chocks. The gooseneck has some metal handrails and some nice small graphics. And here the Cranes Etc team member is telling his mate that he's got his kingpin firmly in the slot. The detailing of the trailer components is of a good standard and there's a yellow stripe running all down the edge. At the rear the light bar is fairly simple with just painted lights and again there's no number plate. Okay, let's give the Mercedes a go on the test track and it rolls very well indeed. A nice smooth ride as you'd expect from a Merc. There's no sprung suspension but you've got a degree of movement on the rear axles. The steering can't move very much before the wheels foul the wheel arches. However, it is at least possible to show the model with a good hard lock on the steering by forcing the wheels over and although they lock hard against the wheel arches and so you can't really roll the model at all, um, at least it does pose very well. The other feature on the tractor is that the cab tilts and it's got quite a good mechanism on this model because the cab goes forward really quite a good distance and therefore can stay tilted so you can see the plastic engine underneath and when you shut it it's got kind of a Mercedes clunk. The Goldhofer module units are pretty similar and they roll along quite well and if you look underneath um, the suspension is all controlled by small cylinders but they're not uh, sprung in any way there's no spring involved in this uh, they just have up and down movement and that applies to each of the wheel sets and the steering is pretty good because it's all linked together on each of the axle units and it's got a degree of proportionality as well on the four axle uh, line and uh, if you set that and move it it all rolls perfectly well one other feature that we haven't covered is the uh, gooseneck itself which has uh, some working cylinders so that the joint can be moved and they're quite stiff so you can kind of set it any way you want. Well it's been a long time coming so let's join the tractor and trailer and it's a standard push fit of the kingpin into the fifth wheel and uh, once you do that it's quite a solid connection and you can tow the whole thing along quite easily. But heavy haulage is all about carrying loads, so let's try some out. This is a Soilmec SR70 piling rig, and it looks great on the trailer combination. And here's a different arrangement with a long fin spine beam, because what we're going to carry is a large fermentation tank. And this combination also looks particularly impressive. Heavy transport models have commissioned a fairly rare livery, and overall the model does look good. 
As usual, it's solidly made by Conrad with very good functionality and flexibility. It's a rare limited edition model and is highly recommended.